Welcome to the Passion Professors Podcast, hosted by Earth University, where stories of life experiences and purpose inspire and unite humanity. Here's your host, Lindsay Andriotti. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Passion Professor Podcast. I'm your host, Lindsay Andriotti from Earth University, and I have with me today Doug Farnell, a longtime friend and a a fabulous business person as well as a creative writer. I wanted to share a little bit about your background, Doug, but first I just want to say hi. Hi, Lindsay. (laughs) Thanks for having me on your show. Oh, I'm so glad you're here today. It's really great. And I want to share with my friends out there that are listening from our membership uh, just who you are. So Doug, I have known as a chief financial officer for almost 15 years, and he's worked with small companies, big companies, publicly traded companies. And after he decided to leave all of that behind, he graduated in his life and he became a novelist. And his passion has really centered around creating these amazing action adventure stories that are written about current events and many of them related to financial times. So Doug, I'm delighted to have you here and I can't wait for you to share your passion with the Earth University crowd. You bet, ready to go. Okay, awesome. Well, first of all, you know, let's get into this discussion by looking at how it was that one day after leaving CFO dumb, <laughs> You wake up and you go, I think I'll write a novel. Tell us about that. How did that happen? Yes. Well, my first novel drew the basis in the financial crisis of 2008, which, of course, we all know, you know, resulted in 10 million people laid off, several million small businesses failing, uh, several multiple trillions of dollars of negative impact on our economy. um, and a number of uh, at least a million and a half people losing their mortgages and losing their savings and so forth. That made me mad, especially being a financial person for a small company. And I just got mad at Wall Street and wrote my first novel. That's so cool. And you needed to. I mean, part of your influence there was in telling a story from a, a more fun way, but you were telling a story that could have been equally as plausible of an outcome. (laughs) So tell us about the major themes of your first book. What's the underlying story here? Okay, the underlying story is rather than, uh, many people, of course, have written about the financial crisis of 2008. Well, of course, that was many years in the making, several years in the making, and several years of aftermath, negative aftermath on our economy, unemployment, and so forth. But the main uh, thing is, Many people wrote books about the financial crisis, which were about like that thick, okay? Very academic, very well researched, you know, hit all the points and all that other. But I said to myself, you know, the average American can't read, even read a book like that, understanding the terms and the things like that. And I, as a financial person, can, but 95% of American public can't do that. What they could relate to is the story of a single business person who went through that crisis and the things that he faced uh, uh, in order to be able to save his uh, company. So I wrote a novel with that entrepreneur. Uh, He's actually an entrepreneur of a higher education software company. And of course, their location is right here in Seattle. Of course. Uh (laughs) That's that's where Doug is from. And I'm originally from there too. Yeah. (laughs) And so that character, just for our listeners, is Daniel Prescott, correct? That's the name of your whirlwind entrepreneur, you know, boy who's going to save his company and the world all at the same time. I love it. Correct. And and so you sat down one day and you said, I'm going to write a novel. Now, that just doesn't flow for everyone. (laughs) So how did you sit down one day and what did you do? Well, first of all, I knew that my only true writing experience had been through writing, you know, performance reviews, uh, you know, write-ups for the bank and, um, you know, a few miscellaneous uh, 
things for, you know, for the business world. I thought I was pretty good at it. So I sat down and I go, oh, well, how do I start my novel? Anyway, recognizing that I was not a genius in writing and writing, especially writing an exciting story, I hired an editor who got me going in the right direction and was able to pull me back uh, in on the right path from time to time. That's really a good point. You know, a lot of people who find their passion or even are shifting their focus of their passion, because I still think you you have a lot of passion for business, and it's why your books are also action adventure business novels, in my humble opinion. They're really, they're, I love the stories you come up with. I think what's fun about it is that you hired somebody. You said, hey, I don't necessarily know the how-to, but I've got this idea for a story or whatever that I'd like to see come to print. And you found somebody who could hire, you you know, that you could hire and make it into a reality. Yes. And she was absolutely fabulous. She was uh, uh, had her master's in English literature from Stanford, had written six or seven books on her own. Yeah. Uh, and was able to guide someone like myself coming from a place of not really knowing how to create that from ground zero. Right. See, that's so cool. So, all right. So here you are. You're now into this novel. You're writing it. You've got the editor. Everything's coming together. What happened to turn it into a book? Uh, So that, how long was that process? What did it take? Both from the mechanical side, but also the heart side, you know, there there was a lot of times where you had to gut through certain things. So yes, there was. Mm -hmm. Yes, there was. And then, uh, so the total time to write, uh, publish and go through all the uh, mechanics of getting the book published took about one year. That was for my first, for my first novel. Uh, It's not taking that long for my second novel, which my first draft is only taking four months, but uh, that's probably because I learned a lot from my first adventure. Yeah. So I was able to do that. And I had a lot of energy behind creating fictional roadblocks for the protagonist, Daniel Prescott, the, the entrepreneur, and threw in some exciting, <clears throat> adventurous things in his way, such as bad guys, hijackings, uh, you know, planes going to run out of fuel, et cetera, et cetera, stuff like that. I threw in there just to add a lot of excitement, but that also was an indicator of just miscellaneous stuff that small business people face every day of the week, every month of the year. So that's one of the things I really enjoyed doing. You know, that's really cool. You created these fictional uh, roadblocks but they are representative of many roadblocks that entrepreneurs face when they start creating companies. Tell us about a couple of roadblocks you faced when you were writing your first novel. Roadblocks. Let's see. Well, (laughs) uh, well, like one roadblock would be, well, how long should I make this or how short should I make this? And as it turns out, my first attempt uh, and when I did finally publish, I published it in hardback, paperback, and uh, you know, ebooks. Um, I published it and thought about it for a year or two, and I go, I'm not really happy with all of the things that I've done. There's a lot of extraneous stuff in there that doesn't really add value to the story or to the points that I'm trying to make, and so I am going to write a revised edition. So I actually did that. So my first edition came out in 2012. My revised edition came out in 2019, which was just two years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Great. So uh, when uh, when people look to buy it, be sure and look for the the revised edition. And we should probably talk about the title of the book, right? Well, I was just going to say you can cut. The book is called The Snow Leopard and the Ibex. And I have the original version. I will have to get the updated version because it sounds like you've added some more juicy tidbits. But I am curious, too, what is the name or can you tell us the name of your upcoming book that should come out next year? Yes, actually, I am hoping to publish in uh, September of this year, if I can. Uh, I've already hired an editor. Uh, I've had a, a, a publicity uh, lady that has helped me tremendously 
recommended really good uh, editors who are experts in both fiction as well as action adventure. I'm going to be starting a contract with them tomorrow for <laughs> editing. And yeah. I just completed the first uh, first draft of this uh, was completed this week. The name of my story yes. is <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Midnight Ride from Sarajevo. Ooh, now that sounds pretty good. <laughs> so the first story of Daniel Prescott is the Snow Leopard and the Ibex. And it was set, set right, in Switzerland and Europe, Geneva. Yes, yes set mostly. About, okay. Yeah, set in about four different, lo- uh, four different countries. Uh, Seattle, of course, Washington, D.C., uh, an airliner at 35,000 feet over the Black Sea. Of course. And also <laughs> Zermatt and the Matterhorn. There you go. See? So... That one is set in kind of those stages. Where is Midnight Ride in Ser- Sarajevo? From Sarajevo, yes. Is it, is it in Sarajevo or is it going to be other places as well? Yes, about 50% of it takes place in Sarajevo and surrounding surrounding Bosnian countryside. The other 50% takes place in Dubrovnik. Oh, nice. So when you do these books, do you have to do missions to go check out places for details do you do you get to do fun stuff that allows you to pull information into the writing what what's your process yes actually my process is twofold what i've done so far is use a lot of google google maps research uh additional research online to be able to find out things that i need to know there's a quite a bit of military action in this second novel so i had to research a lot about well, you know, uh, how does the uh, the military work with NATO and this and that? And Croatia just became part of NATO. So I had to fold all that you know, in there, make the reader aware of those kinds of things. And then I'm actually planning a trip this coming August. So that'd be about two months from now. I'm actually flying to Dubrovnik by way of Paris. And I'm going to do some boots on the ground research when I get there about my novel. I think that's brilliant. I mean, that's if I were a novelist and I was trying to bake in some of the scenery and the stories and the culture, you have to go to some of these places. And and I think for someone who's learning about becoming a novelist or changing from what they're doing now to learning about becoming a novelist, would you say that, you know, uh, I'll call it learning, researching, participating in the spaces that you want to write about is very helpful. Very, very definitely. Um, the, the, I just have a need to do that. Uh, yeah. It just makes me more authentic, which is the kind of guy I like to think I am. And therefore my writing is more authentic as well. I love it. I think it's amazing. Well done. So what else, what other kinds of passions are you having at this stage in your life? So you're, obviously there's a passion for travel because you're writing about that too. <laughs> so, yeah. But what else are, what are you passionate about these days? Well, a big one is, uh, and it's been a challenging thing during the pandemic now, the past year and a half, a big one has been, uh, I've been doing six years of volunteer instru- instructing, teaching but as a volunteer in business and finance for high school kids, public high school kids. And so I have loved doing that. Of course, I don't have kids of my own. uh, And so these kids, uh, students in in high school, of course, at a very, very impressionable age. And I find that they really value the presence of another adult other than their teacher or their parents. Adult that can relate to them and be encouraging to them. So that's sort of the part I play in addition to being, I do an occasional lecture and assist them with some of their assignments, including, uh, you know, these high school kids now are getting into some advanced stuff that I, I think is amazing. Even for college graduates, they're building the basics of their own business plan and making a pitch to a room full of, um, it's, a, it's a mock pitch to a room full of investors to invest in their business. That's I mean, great. that's very advanced business 
a knowledge that these high school kids are now getting. Yeah, that's so cool. Do any of them want to write a novel too? Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to ask them. I, I bet there are some. I mean, you just never know. As you know, writing a book is a business. You know, just because you wrote it doesn't mean that it just magically appears and it, you know, you have to sell some or at least try to if it's going to be a, a commercial product. You know, so maybe talk a little bit about that. How can people get your book? And how did you get it so that they can buy it? Uh, well, the book is available, The Snow Leopard and the Ibex, revised edition now, is available on Amazon.com and also BarnesandNoble.com. Uh, it's also available in independent bookstores by way of Ingram Books, hmm. who distributes to something like 40,000 bookstores nationwide. So they can get it that way. Oh, great. Uh, and they can learn more about me and about that uh, particular book and also my second book as soon as it comes out if they go to my website, dougfarnell.com. Perfect. And all of that information will be in the show notes, everybody. So if you are listening, you can just look, click the box below and you'll see Doug's information and how to get the snow leopard and the Ibex, at least for now. And then we will wait with bated breath for the continued story of Daniel Prescott in Sarajevo. <laughs> Doug, thank you so much for sharing your passion with all of us today. I am grateful. And thank you, Linz. You're very welcome. We're glad you're here. And to all those of you who are listening, please press the like button, hit subscribe, and become a member of Earth University. We would love to see you be a part of our team. And we want to have a lot more conversations about your passion as well. So that's all for now. I'm signing off and I'll see you on the next episode.